Hi, Shining Light Baptist Church. Pastor Dawson here once again with another challenge from the book of Joshua. It's becoming uh, one of uh, my favorite books. It's always been a favorite book of mine, but digging more and more into detail is really just becoming a blessing to me. Going through the COVID-19 uh, 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 pandemic, uh, we're wanting to get some encouragement and Joshua offers plenty of encouragement. We are studying right now different uh, times that uh, stones uh, were prominent in the book of Joshua. Uh, we've already uh, covered the overcoming stones there in chapter number four, uh, detailing what God had done in their lives. Now we want to look at uh, obedient stones or obedient stones in chapter number eight, looking at what they should do now. Uh, the overcoming stones, what God did for them, they would put those 12 stones to remind them of what God did. But now obedience stones in chapter number eight of what they should do now that they're across the Jordan River. And join me in Joshua chapter number eight, verses 30 and 31. I want to read these verses to you today. And uh, of course, this is uh, after they've done several things here already in chapter eight, uh, Joshua reads this way, verse number 30. Then Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, notice this, an altar of whole stones, over which no man had lift up an, any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings unto the Lord and sacrificed peace offerings, verse 32. And he wrote thereupon the stones, a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. So we find Joshua here uh, after they've crossed the Jordan River, getting over to uh, Mount Ebal and uh, raising up some stones here and doing some things. And I, I want us to, to notice two quick things here in Joshua chapter 8. Uh, number one, these stones were a previous command from Moses. These stones were a previous command for Moses. In the previous book, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27, go over with me to verse number one, because Moses had already told them, once you get across the Jordan River, I want you to do something to uh, remind yourselves of what you were supposed to do with the law of Moses. And so Deuteronomy chapter 27, and they're going to read verses one through eight, kind of lengthy, but I, I want us to get the gist of what's going on here at the end of Deuteronomy chapter 27. Verse number one reads, and Moses with the elders of Israel commanded the people saying, keep all the commandments which I command you this day. And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan, notice that, unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, that thou shalt set thee up great stones, and plaster them with plaster, and thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law, when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go in unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey as the Lord God of thy fathers has promised thee. Therefore, it shall be when ye shall be gone over Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. And there shalt thou build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shalt not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shalt build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones. And thou shalt offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God. And thou shalt offer peace offerings and shalt eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. Verse number eight. And thou shalt write upon the stones all the words of this law very plainly. So the first thing that I want us to notice about these obedient stones is that uh, this was a previous command from Moses. This was something that Joshua was already told that you're going to do when you get over. When God takes you over into the promised land, make these stones of obedience. Put them there. It's going to remind you of the law of God. We're already told about Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. 
then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. And so this was the beginning of Joshua's continued success. This previous command that Moses put out, these obedient stones. The second thing I want you to notice here is not just it was, this was a previous command, but also the priority of the command. The priority of command. Notice chapter 27 and verse number 2. Again, because this was one of the first things they were supposed to do once they got to the other side. Verse 2 says this, And it shall be on the day when ye shall pass over Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Come down to verse number 4. Therefore it shall be when ye be gone over Jordan which I command you this day in Mount Ebal. So we know that this was a previous command of Moses, but the priority of the command, this was supposed to be one of the first things that they did when they got across there. This was something that Joshua needed to obey to conquer the land, something that you and I need as well to conquer our days before us. What's the New, Test New Testament equivalent? Matthew 6.33 but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things should be added unto you. One of the things that we have, remember, we have a previous command. What is that previous command? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, 2 Timothy 2.15. And not only do we have a previous command, we should have a priority with this same command. John, Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Going back to Joshua chapter number one, I want to uh, show you a quick chronicle to let you know this was one of the first things that they did. In Joshua chapters one and two, we find the instructions to cross the Jordan River. We come to chapters three and four, they begin to cross the Jordan River. Chapter number five, they accomplished the circumcision, dedicating themselves to God once again as God's people. And then chapters six, seven, and eight, they defeat uh, Jericho and Ai to get the place where they can go to Mount Ebal. And so then at the end of Joshua chapter eight, they are now in Mount Ebal. Verse 30 again says that Joshua built an altar unto the Lord God of Israel in Mount Ebal. Why? There was a previous command. Moses says, when you get there, you need to do this to remind yourselves of what is important, and that is the law of God. But then second of all, it should be a priority in your life. Make sure you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. During this COVID pandemic, to keep our heads level and to make sure that we're going in the right direction, we have to remember we've got a pre previous command as well. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Workmen need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And we need to put some priority on this command. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, waking up early with the Lord Jesus Christ. For Israel, once they got over Jordan, got past Jericho and Ai, they set up on Mount Ebal, and they are about now to put this all down to commemorate what God wanted them to do after doing the overcoming stones of what God did. Now it's their turn, obedient stones, what they should do. Let's have that as an encouragement to our own hearts, previous command and priority on that command, getting through the COVID vi virus with the Lord Jesus Christ. Until we meet again, let's continue keeping our eyes up, our prayers up, our heads up, but our knees down in prayer to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.